Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, this week's prompt is Christmas bird or owl, wintry owl. So I'm going to start with my blue um, piece first. And I did an, a bird back in week two with the wreath prompt. So I'm going to do an owl this time for this next little prompt. So I just will flip through and grab out our piece of fabric, our base. So we're up to number nine and I'm quite excited that I have all of my um, numbers done. That is just like so much work, all done out of the way. And boy, we are closing in on the finish line, aren't we? We really, really are. So that's very exciting. Now, let me pop that away. Bring in our background fabric. Now, I have an owl that I did in the Roxy Creations project earlier in the year, this guy. And um, oh, he was just so much fun because he's layers and layers of um, beads and lace and just some threads. So I'll just bring that up to the camera and I would love one on my bunting at Christmas to have a little look at. Now, you'll probably have to be a little bit smaller than this guy. We'll have a little look at the work, but he's in a book and unless I open that book up to have a little look, he sort of nearly lost a little bit. So my plan is to do him again and stitch him up. Whether I get him done in the time frame, because that is just hours and hours of work. But we'll see. He, um, oh, I wish I could just cut him out and put him on by bunting, but no, we can't do that. Now this owl, I'll show you where I got him from. This is a fantastic little book. If you haven't seen Trish Burr's books and her work, do yourself a favor and go and have a little explore. Now, this is just full of different types of images and they're all iron-on transfers. So I've done the hummingbird before. I did that earlier in the piece. I think it might be even in this book. Where is it? May not be. It might be in my very first one. Yeah, no, it's not. Hummingbird is just gorgeous. And in amongst these images is the owl. There he is. So I enlarged him for the piece that is here, which is just a case of photocopying it and um, increasing it in size. So that's the little owl. So he's going to be my inspiration or my, my little piece. I probably will increase him just a fraction. Like we don't have a lot of room on my panel because the other thing I thought of doing was I haven't done anything with uh, clusters. So being that we're in the bird prompt, I'm going to explore clusters a little bit with everything. And that's gonna help me bring my color in, I think. So what I'm gonna do first is lay down a neutral background, then embroider my little bird who is going to be of those sorts of neutral tones. Then I thought, <clears throat> I love this. This is a pack of fabric I got probably 12 months ago from Rachel. And I've been nibbling away at it. And it's just oh, so nice. And it'd be lovely to have a bit of that hanging up at Christmas because it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, scissors, where are you? Got my pins, got my needle. Yep, I think I'm ready to go. This is like what I'd call a feature fabric. So let's maybe lay down a little bit of this first. Then we might put a piece of this. 
don't want to make it too fussy or too complicated because our little owl is the hero. So it'll only be a few bits and pieces. Definitely need some of that. And then the usual invisible stitch it down so it holds. And that sort of feels like a bit of a trunk of a tree there. Or am I imagining things? So that's similar, that's similar. That's a different one, but similar colour. So we'll, what's that? A little scrap. Looks like something from my world. Let's let's include that. Scrap has to find a spot. So we'll just lay that there. Let's not overthink it, Corinne. Okay, that's similar. That's similar. Okay. That's slightly different. That's similar. And then I've got some wool, which I think is from my so I'm going to put those away. There's nothing there jumping out at me. And I'll just dig a little deeper into that pile. Actually, I've got this sitting on my desk. That feels a diff different sort of colour, tone and texture. Yeah. Let's put a piece of that. What am I cutting? This cut straight across. So this is the sky behind our owl. We're going to keep it nice and neutral. That way it's not competing with um, any beading I do. I wonder if that could go there like that. Just across the back. Yeah. I like that. I'll bring that in a bit. Doesn't need to go all that way. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. That is the background. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. That's going to curl and annoy me. So I'll put a little pin in there. So once I get this stitched down, I might just bring that down a fraction so we get Bring our, our work area in a little bit. Now we should probably look at getting some lace. Because you just got to have some lace. What can I see on my desk? Gosh, if you could see my desk, it's like has exploded in lace. I really need to do a project. This is a doily that I picked up that has a few stains. So I'm very comfortable in chopping into this. Do we bring it down from the top like the little bird has got a canopy coming down? Yeah, I think so. Where's that stain? Let's go in and surgically chop it out. Don't overthink it, Corinne. Just, just do it. See, that's great. Now that this is sacrificed, it'll just disappear into the abyss of my projects. So I'm thinking I'm going to have just that draping through the top there somehow. Maybe I don't even need as much. Maybe I cut that and bring in another piece here. Yeah, I'm going to. There we go. We're cutting again. I'm going to cut through there. And bring in that there. Yep. 
That's good. I like that. Let's just stitch that little bit down there. So nice and simple. All right. Now, our little man. He's definitely going to have to be a little bit bigger. So let's assume, let's get a piece of calico. I wonder. I just had a bit of an idea. I wonder if we stitch him onto calico. Okay, I'm thinking, can you hear the cogs turning? He definitely needs to be bigger, which the photocopier will do for me. Otherwise, I'm never going to get beads in there. Well, I don't have beads big enough, or small enough to do that type of work. So he needs to come in probably about that minimum in size. So all I'm going to do is just get a bit of an idea of his position in my world. Now, what I'm thinking is as another layer, this will help me decide, is I stitch him onto this piece of calico as well. But am I destroying my layers? Yeah, I am. Having said that, if I get him into that space, no, this will work. If I get him into this space and then tear down this patch so it looks like he's separate and he's been done somewhere else and been bought into the piece. So it'll really, I think, help with the fact that we've got this layering effect. So imagine he is now being added into the image and I've torn down the fabric a little bit more to create another layer with our little man on it. That's what I'm thinking. I haven't done this before, so this is something new. Gee, if the prompt was layers, I'd be definitely, definitely doing that. Okay. So let's just assume that he is stitched and he is now being trimmed down. So that'd be all furry and ripped and messy. And he is sitting right there. So I guess my next challenge is to have him seated somewhere so using my friction pen we're going to bring somehow a branch in for him to sit on so this here is a perfect opportunity to explore the clusters now what i'm thinking with the clusters is it's going to be layers of the blue fabric with little layers of lace as the flowers through. So that'll bring the blue in around him. But we've got to get him sitting somehow. This, he's gonna have, he doesn't actually have feet as such. See in the image, he's just floating. So there's a perfect opportunity to bring in something for him to rest his little claws on. So let's just assume that there's a branch coming through here that he is sitting on and it's disappearing up there and it could come up a little bit there and then the branch could scoot across to here it's about giving yourself a little bit of room to then add some feature flowers. So he is sort of 
a big branch is going along the bottom under his little feet, which is this line. And then that is disappearing up and behind him. Like so. Yeah, that'll do. It always changes. Have the best laid plans. Okay. So I'm liking that. So he'll be sitting in amongst that. Now, where is my blue fabric? So clusters will be going back to my little scraps that are kicking around. Here they are, just little bits. That's all we're chasing. So the plan is, is just get, where's my little fussy cut scissors? Is I'll just do a series of little rough circles, all varying sizes, all varying colors of fabric. Keep it very rough and ready. And then we want some lace and texture in there as well. So where's our doily that we were playing with? Let's get this little bit off here that was stained. We only need a little bit. All of that there, isn't it just so pretty? It's so fine. And let's just cut a little bit out. Don't need that. And then in amongst this little cluster of yumminess, we pop some lace. Now, the other thing we might do is we could do with some fibres. And I've been playing with some cheesecloth. which will give us, I think that's two layers, it'll give us some little fibres. Got to be a bit gentle with this stuff because it does disintegrate fairly quickly. So let's just cut a piece and get that. So, all right, let's have a bit of a recipe here. We do base, I'm not even on camera, goodness me. Base fabric, cheesecloth, another fabric, a bit of lace, and then another fabric. So what we might do is so that, because I've literally jumped ahead here, I've got so many little projects happening here. I'm going to stitch this together now and make the little cluster. Because by the time I get that owl done, I think it'll be just refreshing to have my little clusters. That's, is that upside down? Oh, I sort of like that pale blue in there. Let's just leave it upside down. Let's get at least a stitch in there to hold this little thing together. Then we might crimp it. A little so what I mean by that is we're just gonna squish it like so so it's not so flat and then see if we can get some stitches in there to hold that shape just to make it look a little bit lumpy bumpy looking it's looking good and that will then give it a chance to show off the lace and bits. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my beads. Goodness me, how quickly it just goes into a mess. Let's get some little beads. I've ordered another bead container too because they've been all right while the project's been on. 
because I've had them sort of separated into um, these trays. But as you can see, project's coming to the end and I've got to face the reality that I don't have enough little containers. See, underneath all that, look down in there, there's a bead that's running loose. Let's grab him out as well. Let's get this. Oops. Okay. I've got my bead going on to the bottom of the cluster. First problem. I don't think that bead, that needle will fit through there. But anyway, let's have a little look. That's good. So this will get a little bit of bling. The little owl will have beads in him. But so will these little flowers and that'll help. Yeah, I need a smaller needle. I've been doing so much sewing lately. The tip of my finger is just so tender. I do have a great is there a beading needle on this? There should be. I do have a great um, silicone thingy. But look at that. I've even worn a hole in the top of that. I tell you, this is just hard work, isn't it? Where's my beading needle? Don't tell me it's not here. Oh, I tell you, where, oh, where are you? It must have disappeared into the, oh, there it is. Couldn't see for looking. All righty, where are we at? We're going to thread this. Nothing like bringing beading into the piece and having a sore finger to kick off the week. I guess it's going to be even sore. Doesn't matter. Beautiful. So just a few little stitches. And then I might just put a little pearl in there as well just to add a third color these little guys will do the trick could even bring some champagne in on some of them done it again look the beads on the wrong side okay come back through to the front add the little bead this is not rocket science but yet I seem to be struggling there we go so we've now got the three little beads in there a little sparkle. I'm going to put another one and I'm going to go to the champagne. I know there'll be champagne in the little owl because there was in the last one and it just was so pretty. I was so pleased when I heard this prompt because the owl, oh, I was so, so enjoyed doing that piece and to have him up at Christmas as well a version of is just a real real treat so i'm pleased with that my fingers aren't but hey i'll survive now i'm just going to end that off so i have now a tiny little cluster of all of my blues 
and some beads. Let's get that out of the way. Ready to go to create the buds on my um, branch. Now, the branch. I just did a video on some Etsy shares, Etsy um, deliveries, and the packaging is lying here, this hessian, this uh, twine. So we may as well use it. So what we'll do is I will couch onto my piece this little bit of twine, and that will form the branch that he will sit in. So that's the plan, guys. Yep, that will work a treat. So I will need in amongst my goodies for when I'm sitting next to the couch, my beads, so we'll put them to one side. Do you know how many beads I have in my couch from this project? Crazy. What will we do next? Stitching down the background, that's pretty boring. Let's just make some more clusters. How are we going for time? We've got 26 minutes. Let's grab another little bit of this gorgeous doily. This feels very thick. Is that an edge? Oh no. Yeah, it was. It's the seam from around that placemat. So that's all right. Let's cut another bit of that. Another bit of that. Oh, this is good that I'm getting the prompt um, clusters because I wasn't sure how I was going to include that. My red book has clusters because the Christmas tree was clusters of um, bits and pieces like this sort of system. I'll put the lace on top this time, the fabric underneath. That looks a bit too similar. I'm being pedantic like I do with a bit of this underneath, I think. So we need Probably overthinking this. That, 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 and then that. And now we grab So you're probably wondering how is she gonna get the owl onto this? We've got a couple ways. That owl is an iron-on transfer, so I could just apply heat and he will come on to here. But I sort of don't want to bring him out of the book. So you could use a light box or a window to get a source of light from behind and then sketch him on. You could freehand him on. He's not hard if you were to um, photocopy him and then put an, a cross through him. Let's say you draw a line through the center and then through the opposite way, and then sort of focus on just one quarter and then the second quarter and the second quarter, and you'll find that's a, a really easy way to freehand an image onto something. You can enlarge it as you go. Um, there is some tracing paper on the market that is different colors. That's probably what I'll do because I'll just need a bit of a rough outline. I won't worry about him being, you know, perfect to Trisha's design. Um, so I'll probably lay the tracing paper. It's got like a chalky, chalky feel to it. And then I'll just go around with a stylus. Now, you can use a pencil as long as it's blunt because you're going on to fabric. And if it's not blunt, you're just going to pierce the tracing paper. See, I've done it again. Look, the bead's on the wrong side. Goodness sakes. So as long as you don't pierce the tracing paper, 
So by using a stylist, which is pretty much like a pokey tool, a book all, except it has a little ball on the very end of the point. So it's not sharp, it's blunt. And they're perfect for tracing um, images onto fabric because you're not going to pierce your... I didn't scrunch this up. So I'll try and do this all in one. Stitch the needle on. I've enrolled. Here's a bit of exciting news. Probably you guys won't care too much because it doesn't really affect you. But for me, I'm very excited. I've enrolled in a four-day retreat down in Victoria. Yay! with uh, Lisa Mattock. Four days of different styles of embroidery. And I can't wait. It all happened out of the blue. I was purchasing a pack of fabric from Vintage Blend Studios. We all know and love young uh, Susanna. And she was posting a video about... Um, a seascape that she's doing for her brother in Eng uh, England because she's going on the Paris trip and I so happen to be going on that Paris trip as well with Lisa, having a look around Paris and the different places Lisa goes to source her fabrics and goodies. So Susanna and I have sort of come together with a common ground, the world of YouTube and fabrics and our love of vintage. So we've become quite chatty chums, as you would say. So yeah, I was I saw this video get posted of Lisa, um, sorry, Susanna, when she's making a seascape for her brother. And she's bought this fabric. See, I've got the bead on the wrong side again, for goodness sakes. See, well, one would think I could talk and work at the same time, but that just proves I can't. It's not going to stop me. So, yeah, she posted her video showing how she's using this panel, which has six images of a seaside, and she's picked one of them, and she's collaging fabrics around it to create a wall hanging. Well, that panel, oh, my brain just started popping, and I'd love to make a panel like that using up all of these blues and beads and sandy tones and she had one of the panels just caught my eye and it was like screaming off the tv at me you know how it is these things happen when we see a nice piece of fabric don't they ladies anyway so i i didn't even finish the video straight away i sent her a message and it was like four in the morning she would have been sound asleep i hope i didn't wake her but i didn't think of that all I could think about was this seagull standing on a post look with the ocean behind him. So I asked her, would she put a pack together for me? Because I just love to own a, a snippet of her goodies and this panel. Anyway, in amongst it, I remembered Susanna saying that she had done retreats in the past with ladies. So I gave her a little nudge again and said, when are you doing a retreat? I'd be so on a plane down to hang out. And she said, well, she was going to a retreat of Lisa's. And I'm like, yeah, I've seen those pop up online, but they just sell out so quickly. And she said, well, the Victorian ones still had some seats available. So if any ladies are out there and you're in Victoria, I'm not in Victoria, I'm in Queensland, but... The girl will travel for sewing. So I jumped on the website. Sure enough, there was some tickets available still for the Victorian one. So I grabbed a ticket. This all happened in like a 10-minute window. And then in amongst it all, our friends decided that they couldn't go on a cruise that we had all booked um, in... Easter, April next year, 
we were all going to New Zealand. It wasn't a long cruise because they could only get so much time off. So they sort of had to be a little careful with what cruise we went on and it had to be in school holidays. So I got a message to say that, um, yes, they couldn't make it, which was awfully sad. But unfortunately, the tax man has said, you've sold a property and we want a chunk of money. So they're like, mm, well, I better be a bit careful. So they're being very responsible and we've um, postponed that cruise. Well, my husband and I still want to go somewhere because that's our time of the year when we can, you know, go somewhere. So we jumped on to the website and we're madly looking at these cruises that maybe we could go for a little bit longer or further afoot because now we had no restraints with school holidays or time frames and things like that. So the long story short is in amongst us going, oh, you can't come. Oh, all right. Well, maybe we could adjust it and, um, you know, see what we could do. And in the process, I contacted the travel agent just to sort of get a bit of a feel for what penalties our friends would suffer by not um, doing the cruise. So I think they just forfeit their deposit. And even then it sounds like they might be able to get a credit and then we can do it maybe the following year when things settle down for them. So in amongst it, I'm texting with Susanna and she's saying there's a retreat. So my husband's looking at cruises and we've decided to um, still go on a New Zealand cruise, but the first one we had to fly to Sydney to catch it, to go to New Zealand. It was 10 days around Easter. It's on one of those really big ships that we've sort of been very P&O here in Australia and we're starting to get Royal Caribbean. Canard is already here, but only out of Sydney. So we're like pretty excited just to see a new ship. Anyway, um, we've found another New Zealand cruise, but it comes forward by a month, which suits us better. Our orders will be done for our Christmas shops in January, Feb. So we're sort of kicking around in March with an opportunity to, to actually do something. Where April, we're sort of um, back into orders again because all the Australian companies are starting to showcase their bits and pieces. So April is a little tricky for us, but you know we would have managed. So it's looking like we're still gonna go on our cruise. We're bringing it forward to March. And the bonus is we get three extra days. And here's the great thing, we can go out of Brisbane. So now I don't need to try and find probably two nights accommodation in Sydney, plane flight to Sydney. Put those bins out that I'm using. Yeah, so I've actually saved some money. I've got three extra days at sea where those three days would have been, they're not the beads I was using, they're really gold. I'm sure you were yelling at the screen. Oh, they're cute. Could use some of them. What do I do with them? Anyway, let's get a couple of these. Yeah, so I got three extra days. I've changed the departure to Brisbane instead of Sydney. So we don't have the palaver of trying to get down there and get to a boat having to rely on the airline system. We can literally just go for it. So that's a, a stress off of our mind. So it sort of has worked out okay for us. It's a shame that our friends can't come because that just would have been such, such a hoot, but there will be another time. Just was not meant to be. And then in amongst it all, I'm chatting with Susanna and I quickly grabbed the ticket for the retreat. I'll be in the June group. There's a lady coming from the UK. I cannot remember her name. How rude of me. 
it's only just all happened so I haven't really studied exactly who she is and I know she sells kits on Lisa's site called stitchery and it's really fine embroidery and I believe she uses watercolor in the background first and then embroiders on top she's a UK designer So I've just dropped my thread off of this needle. So I'm really super, super excited about next year. So it's feeling a little, little nice. I've got my trip to Paris with Lisa to do this um, tour. And then I've got my cruise, our annual cruise holiday or whatever holiday, wherever we can get a holiday to. And then as a little side bonus, I'm off to learn some new things. Have a little bit of training. There we go, there's another one. So you can see the effect that these little clusters will have. They'll be really pretty just sort of working their way through this piece. I'll make another one while we're chitty chatting. You know what I'm liking as well? I'm really liking the way that this is turned under here, sitting like a little little window I'm really tempted to actually stitch that down like that you know it's funny how these pieces come together this randomness of it it's so much fun I hope you're all enjoying the project and it's not giving you too much of a brain drain that's just coming together for you. I haven't thought too much about my red project. I'm not sure what. Where's my little scrappy bit place? Oh, that's a nice little piece. We'd have to use that. Yeah, I'm just, I haven't thought about the red one yet. It'll be, I'm guessing, a bird. Well, obviously, but I mean, not a, not an owl. So I don't know. We'll see. Let's just get this one out of my head. There'll be a lot of work in this one, so maybe the next one might be more of a simple project if you're looking for a great bird pattern and I've used it before Alfred he's a pattern that Lisa Maddock has on her website it's a PDF file you probably could buy it as a printable pattern too I'm just not sure on that I think I think you might be able to so I just need to scrunch this up a little bit and in the back of the book gives you lots of components to create a bird and it's just a lovely pattern to have in your your bookcase I went crazy on some books too oh goodness it's that Susanna she had a tilde book by the ocean in that same video and I'd never seen it but you know I haven't been out lately so I'm not sure if it's a new book or an old book but, um, yeah, I saw it. And I think that there was a, the wall hanging prompt idea was in that book. So that's what sent Susanna down the rabbit hole. So I saw that and I'm like, oh, my goodness, look at that. That book looks interesting. So I have a little list of books that whenever I see them on a video and I'm like, oh, that's that's interesting. I just write them down on my little list and then every so often I'll have a bit of a hunt around to see where I can find them and what price they are and you know and I happen to get on to Booktopia this time because I type it's a tilde so I typed in Booktopia tilde and I think it's by the sea or something like that and up it came I was like oh and it was on sale so then I thought, oh, I wonder how the rest of them are faring. So I got my little list out 
and probably 90% of them on my list was on sale. And it must be because of the Black Friday sale. So if you have a bit of a list of books that you're hunting for and you want to save a few dollars, now I've lost a piece of cheesecloth. Where did that go? I'm sure you guys saw it. Oh, I can't see where it went. Must have flitted back into the box. Doesn't matter. I will re-watch the video to see where it went. So yeah, the, what was I saying? The Black Friday sales are on. So I end up saving on most of the books 33% which is, you know, a lot of money when you're buying a few books. That pretty much meant, I think I got three books free out of the whole, the whole thing. So was very happy with that. So it was a very um, fruitful day on the shopping department. The whole plan for that whole day was to go to a shopping center and buy a pair of jeans because my three-quarter length jeans are starting to look pretty tired I hate shopping for clothes it's just not my thing I'd rather go to a fabric shop and buy threads and fabrics and I was looking at my jeans I don't know where I was and they're looking so faded the side seams look like they're about to explode I'm gonna there's is that my piece no yes it might have been the side seams are about to split they're as thin as thin. They're like lovely to wear in Queensland summer. They're not hot. So they're actually pretty good. But down against my calf muscle is this tiny little hole. Like I could stitch it. We could stitch something on, couldn't we? What am I looking for? I want a bigger bead. And I think what's happened is my bandit, my pup, has caught his tooth on my pants and has ripped a little hole. So I'm walking around. Oh, I'm such a dag. I'm walking around with this tiny little hole at the back of my jeans. So admittedly, they're the oldest ones I own. So I'm thinking I must, must go and get a pair of jeans. And this has been in my head for a couple of weeks. But just, oh hate going to clothes shopping I mentioned hate shopping centers full stop and um, so I went to the cupboard and I pulled out my second pair my spare pair which is slightly newer slightly better now I took them a week ago up to visit my dad and I sort of thought I'll be right I'm only there overnight I will um, I'll be fine I'll wear them can't get too much trouble on a farm, can you? Well, I get there and Dad's in the middle of harvesting onions. So I'm wearing my better jeans, which are still probably five years old. Not as worn as the pair that are 10 years old. Anyway, um, we're in the hay shed and we're bagging up onions. There's dust and all of that stuff. Well, that was all right. That washes out. But then there's a mulberry tree. Yes, a mulberry tree. And it was loaded, absolutely loaded. And I said to Dad, I said, oh, I'm going to pick an ice cream container of mulberries, take it back with me, freeze them down, and then as summer rolls through, I've got mulberries frozen in the freezer that I can put into milkshakes and things like that, make smoothies. So I picked, you know, those really big tubs of ice cream? I picked one of those containers full. I was under that tree for about an hour. And in that tree with me were lorikeets. There was a crow. We were all in there. So I was chatting to them and they were all squawking at me. And there was fly things and grub things and birds. Like we were all in there. And this tree is not huge as in a big trunk tree, but it's pretty big 
with a big canopy that comes to the ground. So to get all the good mulberries, you've got to get in under that canopy to get to them. And of course, I'm wearing my jeans. And there may have been a few instances where I brushed up against, against the branches that were dripping. Like these mulberries were the size of my thumb. That was so beautiful. My tree in Brisbane has bared nothing this year. I don't know. I think it's because the the pipes from our septic system, the sullage, the, the recycled water comes out at the back of the block and those spray heads can be moved. And for years they've been directly above that mulberry tree. So I've had fantastic crops of mulberries every year. But... Pepper came along who decided to chew all of the pipes. So now these big long 10 meter pipes are now about a meter long. And they're just the water I would believe. Oh, I've done it again. Look, seriously. So these pipes aren't getting the water to my tree. So I think that's why my, my mulberries have been a little bit ordinary this year where dad's tree is right in a bit of a gully and it gets not only the water from the mountain that's behind, but it also has the uh, overflow from a tank. So that mulberry tree is really healthy and just bearing so much fruit. So I got my tub of mulberries. I stained my jeans. So now I have a pair of Ah, a pair of jeans. Well, they're three-quarter jeans, which I pretty much live in, that have got mulberry stains on them. I have a second pair that has a hole. It's not a big hole. And I know it's there, but probably no one would ever notice. And then this Friday, which you'll be watching this Saturday morning, so for you, yesterday... We're going to, we've been invited by my friends who were coming cruising to go to an art gallery down the Gold Coast for a premiere opening, which is so not our thing. But she has been invited by someone that she knows. So she sent me a message and said, you guys up for an art gallery on Friday afternoon? And we're like, oh yeah, we'll do that. So I can't wait to pull out those mulberry stained jeans or the jeans with the hole in it <laughs> and trot around Hope Island looking like a little feral. So I must, must get to a shop and buy a pair of pants. I want one of those little guys again. So there you go. That's my world this week. I seriously need to stop doing craft and take care of some maintenance issues there we go could do with a pair of shoes too goodness me i'm gonna need at least an hour in a shopping center and that just pains me i always have a pair of red sandals in my repertoire and i pretty much that's all I wear is red sandals. I just like red sandals. I think I'm Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. I have a pair of neutral brown, blacky, tony ones and then this red pair. So, you know, you've got to mix it up. And um, these red sandals have been wet lately. And because they're leather and they were stained red, the stain now has turned into a tangerine -y sort of tone. It's not very nice. So I really could do with a pair of red sandals. And being that summer is here in Queensland, there should be some nice options in the shops. And of course, isn't if there isn't, one is not going to go to too much effort. And that will be a case of those tangerine sandals will just last me for another year. And then I'll probably go to Spotlight and spend hours wandering the aisles just absorbing the world of spotlight yet i'll go into a westfield shopping center and i'll whip through there like a rocket isn't that silly 
look like a dag, but my craft supplies are good. Crazy girl. Anyway, where's me lacy bit? How are we going for time? We've got a few minutes. So this tiny little piece of crocheting has just given me so much. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? So if you think you need a lot of goodies for slow stitch, you really don't. Probably your biggest challenge is finding a range of goodies, but in small lots. Because you really don't need like a, a pillowcase size piece of fabric at all. You really need a dinner plate size piece of fabric because we just use morsels. Probably the pieces of fabric that you, you need in quantity are neutrals, like these types of background fabrics. Everything else, charm squares would be enough. If you get to a fabric shop, like a quilt shop, have a look at their charm squares. You'll get lots and lots of snippets of fabric and color options. Just pinching that. Okay. So in my next video, I will show you this completed and we will plan the red one. What I might do for the red one is I'll get the background down and I'm going to do a similar background. I'll keep these fabrics out. Look at that, we've got red already. We'll keep those fabrics out. I'll definitely be doing a bird in a tree. I'll definitely be doing clusters. So it'll be, you know, a similar sort of work to this. I've just got to find a bird. I did notice in that Trish Burr book um, some other birds. So I don't think that'll be too hard. I think I'll be able to find something. So I might prep the background fabric for the red one before the video and then we can get straight into the actual bird. The clusters will be same same. So that's another process I guess that we could I could prepare earlier and then we could play maybe with the bird. I don't know. We'll see how we go. It's like a week away. Okay. We'll see how we go. So it's Thursday morning when I'm filming this. So there might be a video Sunday. If I can get into this and get it started get it done. We'll see. I do have an art gallery to go to, ladies. Doesn't that sound posh? Hopefully I find some pants. <laughs> I shouldn't even probably be wearing jeans to an art gallery. Yeah, watch me. Just watch me. Look, I'll put a heel on. Trini for London, she puts a nice heel with her jeans and a pretty little blouse. She pulls it off. There we go. Done. So we've got our little clusters started. I'll need a lot more, but they'll look really cool scattered around our little guy. I uh, might do some leaves. I, I don't know. We'll see how we go. But I've certainly got enough bits and pieces here to carry on with some more clusters and things. So we're coming up to the hour. Very good. Now, actually, I might just quickly grab that book because there were some other birds in there. So if you're thinking about birds, when I was flipping through before... 
there was some sweet, sweet little little guys in this. There. Look at those little fellows. Little one there. Look at that. He's gorgeous. Those pair. Mm. Beautiful. Now, they, they would be great just as a piece of fabric laid down and then those little lines that are on him, I'll bring him up to the camera, they become just stitches. Just keep it really loose. Break it down into some little lumps of fabric, little head, little wings, little tail feathers, and then just drop some stitches down. And then there's your twine. Look, there's the clusters. And then some little leaves in behind. So, yeah, he's got potential. There's another one there. Look at the attitude on that face. I love those two and I love him. But we'll think about it. There's a bigger one. There's some more. Oh, there's heaps in here. So if we go to the embroidery section, they will be here somewhere. Isn't this work beautiful? There they are. Look at them. Oh, I won't be doing that. That is just like next level. There he is. Look, isn't that beautiful? Yes, don't expect that. We're not going to be going to that degree. There's a couple more of them. Stunning. Look at all the French knots under this log here. Look at that. Just the detail. Beautiful. Gorgeous book, available at all good bookstores. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you in peace and I will see you all in the next video, which may be Sunday. If it's not on Sunday, it'll be the next week with a bit of an update on this and then the starting of the red piece. We'll see how the next few days roll. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Stay safe. Bye-bye.